serious? Hi there guys, welcome to the Dutch C channel, thank you very much for tuning in and this is a video in my build series of a 7 inch FEV drone. In this case I've got the Rotorama body frame, 7 inch version and I've already done a video on that frame. I've already done a video about the stick I'll be using, a Mamba Diatone stick and I had originally planned to do one video in which I install the entire stick. However, I reconsidered, <laughs> yeah, I reconsidered and uh, that would be a very long video. And uh, well, guess what? I do do longer videos, but I think it would be more beneficial to you if I cut that up into sections, which you can then easily find. Uh, in this case, I'll be doing one video about the installation of the 4-in-1 ESC. If you were to build a quadcopter maybe in a half a year, a 7 inch or a 5 inch, you would then be able to find a video about the installation of a 4 in 1 ESC if that's, if that's the thing you are struggling with. Or maybe that's something you've done a lot of times before and you want to skip that. So again, in this video we're going to install this 4 in 1 ESC into the quadcopter. And I'll tell you what considerations I make while installing it, how I plan that and what uh, things you uh, might want to avoid. And so, let me see, I've already taped the motor wires to the arms. That's uh, one thing I've done, and that's about it, really. I haven't done any soldering. Yeah, I've um, uh, soldered up an XC60 to my power leads. That, that's it. That's the only soldering I've already done on this, on this project. And obviously I've screwed the motors to the frame, right? No need to do a video about that. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's install our 4 in 1 ESC. And um, after this, in the next video, I'll be installing the, uh, the flight controller. And I will probably do a separate video about the installation of the receiver. Why not write a, a short video about the installation of a crossfire receiver and digital setup, why not? A separate video on how I install a Vista setup into this quadcopter. Okay, that will be coming up. Let's install this 4-in-1 ESC. Alrighty, now depending on how your frame is built, you want to uh, first see how you want to install your 4-in-1 ESC. Typically you want uh, the power leads to come out the back, but maybe you've got some uh, kind of obstruction in your frame or you want to install your VTX right behind your uh, stack. In that case you might be better off rotating your stack around and having the power leads come out the front. That's all possible, of course. In my case, it's, it doesn't really matter. I could go either way. Now, one thing I do need to um, be wary of is that I will, well, just like you probably, I'll have a capacitor on uh, my uh, on my ESC, like over here, and over here uh, behind my stack I'll have that uh, Visa set, right, uh, the Visa unit. So that capacitor, this is not a physically large capacitor, some are, some are pretty long. And, and in that case you might want to, well, check if that will fit, if that capacitor won't be in the way of your VTX, or in my case the, uh, the Vista unit. So that might be another reason to switch the stack around, have that capacitor come out the front. There'll be a lot of room at the front, right? The only thing I'll have at the front is my receiver. Yeah, and camera, of course, but there's more than enough room over here. However, as you can tell, my capacitor is physically pretty small. And this is an enormous frame. Yeah, my Vista unit will be over here. Here are the mounting holes for the Vista unit. And there's more than enough room, right? So... Yeah, that won't be a problem. And yeah, so this 4 one ESC is recessed in the frame, as you can tell. So I will need to take that in consider into consideration when soldering up this, this capacitor to it. I can't have the capacitor come out uh, straight out the back, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, so that's something I need to consider. Also... This is something I already 
noticed. There is very little room in between the 4-in-1 ESC and this front arm assembly. There is about a millimeter of room and it looks like that fits but there will be a ribbon cable right from the 4-in-1 ESC to your flight controller and if I install that ribbon cable now this won't fit. That one millimeter of room isn't enough. However, however, this is a very luxurious frame. As you can hopefully tell, I can slide the entire stack front and back. To the front and to back. If it's now positioned uh, at the furthest forward position. So I've got a lot of leeway. About five millimeters of leeway. And that uh, will be enough. So that's nice. Yeah, okay, so and another consideration will be your power leads, right? Those will, in my case, come out the side over here. So you'll have to plan the routing of those wires. I want ideally to have those wires be as short as possible. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay, so probably uh, the ESC will wind up approximately over there. Yeah, so I will have to measure what the routing will be of those wires and how long those will have to be. And let's see, my positive was on this side and the negative on that side. So this will be more convenient like so. And then curl the ground up like so. And then have the positive curled up like so, more or less, yeah. I'll do that uh, more precisely when the <laughs> when the camera is not in the way, but uh, yeah, okay. So that's uh, that's a couple of things you need to consider when installing your uh, b even before you go ahead and uh, solder things up, right? Where will your stack be positioned and what will be the orientation of your stack? And then uh, how long will the wires have to be? What is the angle going to be of that uh, capacitor? All things you need to consider. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do before I permanently uh, mount the 4-in-1 ESC in my frame is pre-tin all the motor wire tabs. Right, 12 in all. And yeah, so that's the... I'm not going to pre-tin the power leads. I want to solder up my power leads when the 4-in-1 ESC is in the frame. Not super duper convenient, but that way I'll be sure uh, that uh, the, the wires are rooted correctly. Maybe, yeah, probably I'll, I can't pre-tin the, the, the pads. But okay, so let's see about the motor wire pads first. I'm gonna heat up this TS100. Is this a, is this a TS100? Yeah, TS100 soldering iron. Yeah, I've had it for years. Works, right? And I'm gonna, yeah, so 390 degrees Celsius. That's borderline too warm. Uh, it does uh, work quickly this way, but yeah, it, you might wanna consider uh, using like uh, 380 degrees, but um, this works reasonably well for me. Okay, and is this a how to solder video? Uh, not so much, but what you want to do is obviously heat the, the pad itself, not the tin. Maybe put a little bit of tin on your soldering iron to spread the heat, then preheat the heat, the solder pad, and then let the solder flow onto the pad. So not, don't touch the, the soldering iron with your tin, touch the pad with your tin and it'll, uh, well, you, you'll instantly see when the pad is warm enough, the tin will solder on, uh, will flow onto your pad. And I'm not sure how visible this will be. The, the camera's position is a bit awkward for me. Hopefully this will be visible enough. Now what I want to do what I'm trying to do here is create a solder blob on uh, the, the motor wire, uh, motor pads in which I can submerge more or less the wires once I solder those in. So it'll have to be a, a puddle in which I can 
easily um, submerge again the motor wires. I hope that makes sense. It's a bit of a bubble I'm trying to create on these motor pads. And you'll see that this takes a little bit of um, practice. Right after a couple of quadcopters, you'll know how big or small you want this puddle to be. Also depends on how much solder you'll pre-tin the wires with. In most cases, I don't put a lot of tin pre-tinning on the, those uh, wires, just a little bit to soak them up a little. But uh, most of my pre-tinning is therefore done on these pads. And I want to obscure the entire pad. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to see any of the copper or gold, whatever this is, anymore after creating that bubble. And that is about it. Uh, not much more uh, to tell uh, about pre-tinning these pads, really. All right, and I am now actually a couple of steps further, as you can tell. I have the 4-in-1 ESC in my frame, uh, hopefully for the last time. I've added uh, the anti-vibration grommets. And, oh, something you will need to... Um, consider or uh, be mindful of, I have connected up this ribbon cable, right? That's, uh, that's a ribbon cable that goes to the to the flight controller. You will probably need, well in my case I definitely need to install it now before I solder up the motor wires because I can't get to that plug anymore afterwards. Keep that in mind, maybe you need to uh, add that ribbon cable as well. Okay, so I've already uh, soldered up the power uh, leads and actually um, ordinarily you'd use a multimeter. I have used a multimeter, but you can now also test if the flight controller would be powered up. So let's hook it up again. Do this after checking things with your multimeter, which I have. There we go, and uh, we can now power up the entire stack from uh, running voltage, so 6S in this case. Let's see what happens. And that is what happens. Motors aren't connected yet, so you won't uh, hear that beep, 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 beep uh, or anything. And I can't test the motors, obviously, but you can hopefully see all LEDs have uh, lit up. We now have a working, uh, at least a flight controller. The flight controller gets power and there are, are no shorts, there's no smoke, <laughs> that's, that's helpful. And the next thing we'll do is actually solder up the motor wires. Yeah. First uh, thing, there will be uh, some planning again. How do I want my motor wires uh, to be routed? If you've seen build videos from me before or maybe Instagram pictures, I often route my motor wires over the ESC, curl them uh, onto the motor pads like so. Right, and that makes for a clean look of your quadcopter, definitely. Yeah, and I haven't found any technical downsides of this. This simply works if you've got the, uh, the, the room for it in your frame, right? For this kind of routing. So be mindful of that. Also, it might be difficult to have the motor wires reach down to the ESC, especially if you've got a heat shield like this. Yeah, that's, uh, that makes this a little bit more difficult to have the the motor wires won't be laid flat onto the ESC. They'll have to reach down to the pads. So that might be a downside. Also, another consideration in this is the maintainability of your quadcopter. If you do this, it'll be harder to replace a motor, for instance. Right, your entire stack will have to be uh, torn apart, most likely to replace, to desolder and resolder the motor. 
keep that in mind. If you run the motor wires like so, a little more, uh, a little bit more <laughs> lazy maybe, a lazy way of uh, doing things, but this is more maintainable and um, also a little bit easier to do this. Yeah, in this case I am going for maintainability. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I'll uh, have the motor wires run next to the stick, basically. This way I can also, maybe if, uh, if I crash my quadcopter, uh, more easily identify if something is wrong. If a uh, wire has been torn off or anything. So yeah, this is what I will do. So yeah, you've already seen me massage the wires in place. And then you take a, a clip, clipper, a needle nose plier. Needle nose plier? No, what is this? A straight cutter? Well, <laughs> yeah, a wire cutter. Oh well. Okay, so I'm gonna lay down all 12 of these wires and snip them off to the exact length that I want them to to be. Obviously uh, don't snap them off at the edge of the ESC but at the furthest edge of your shoulder pad. Clip, clip, clip. All right, and the same thing for the other three motors, obviously. Next thing you want to go and do is uh, strip the ends of these wires to be able to solder them uh, onto the pads, right? So how much? Well, uh, lay down the tip of those wires onto the solder pads and you'll see how much. A couple of millimeters, like three millimeters or more or less. Yeah, definitely don't uh, take off too much. Okay, and I'm gonna again use this needle nose plier. And what I do is I um, stress the wire a little bit, definitely don't exert a lot of power, and then turn the wire in, in that uh, needle, no in the, uh, that wire cutter. Basically, I'm scoring the, the, uh, the protective uh, outer shell, the what is it, silicone outer shell of the wire. And then I scrape of that uh, about three millimeters okay so um, yeah I'm not gonna have you uh, sit uh, through me cutting off the insulation of 12 wires but after this this I'm obviously gonna actually solder things all right trying a different camera position here <laughs> maybe you'll be able to see something <laughs> like this yeah so I've stripped all motor wire ends next thing you do is curl up the the wires right and you do that to prevent stray hairs or uh, strands or well wires and those could potentially bridge uh, the gap from one motor pad to the other and if you do that uh, sometimes the motor will seem to work reasonably well but if you have one motor that stutters that doesn't spin up well or stutters or spins up slower or later than the other motors you might have yourself a stray, uh, a stray hair coming from one wire to the well to the other pad to the pad that it's not supposed to be on okay now we're gonna pre-tin all those 12 wires, so those wire ends, so let's power up the soldering iron again and I find this to be a little bit uh, cumbersome or annoying most times because the, you don't have a surface to put those wires on. Oh well, what I do is I let the wire rest on the tip, so I kind of, hopefully you can see that a little bit, I kind of push the wire up with my soldering iron 
and then put the tin on the wire. Hachi good day. And uh, you can probably not really see that well enough, but you, you can, um, well, probably understand what I'm doing. I'm again supporting the wire with my wire uh, soldering iron and then push the wire, the, the solder tin onto the wire. And you can probably see the smoke, right? Once I see that smoke, I know I'm done. That smoke is probably the soldering tin heating up the the out the, the protective uh, outer layer of the wire. Not completely sure, but most times when I see the smoke, I know that wire is done. I must say this is a, an easy frame to work on. There's heaps of room everywhere. It is a 7 inch frame, right? So that's uh, to be expected. But also for, for a 7 inch frame this is roomy. Easy to work on somehow. I'm not completely sure why. See, there's that smoke again. Smoke, smoke, all right, three to go. Oh, by the way, also, uh, when you're considering whether to route your wires over the ESC or uh, to the outside of the, the stack, which is what I'm doing right now, your wires will be a little bit shorter this way. Again, it won't look as neat as when you're routing the wires over the ESC, but if you want to save weight, then this is also a way to save weight. Okay, now we're going to actually solder up the wires to the ESC. Right, and what I do is I make sure that I can easily reach things. Right? So maybe uh, the stick screw might be in the way of certain tabs or anything. Make sure you know that before you go and solder things. If I were to solder up these pads from this side, the heat sheet will be, would be in the way. I wouldn't be able to angle down my soldering iron like so and, and reach the pads like so. So again, try that before you commit to things. Right, if you uh, go ahead and commit to things and then find out you it's hard to reach, you'll, um, you won't have an uh, easy time keeping your soldering iron uh, steady or maybe the wires. So yeah, that's a bit of a tip there. What more can I tell you about this? Not much. Oh yeah, uh, if you run the motor wires over the ESC, it's easier to reach things, I now find. <laughs> yeah, so let me see. What is the easiest way of doing this? Probably uh, start at the topmost over here and then work my way down. Is that uh, the way to go? That should work. Okay, let's move these wires out of the way and again I'm gonna uh, this is a little bit more cumbersome for me because I'm videoing things. I also I'm also trying to keep things in view. Without that, this would be easier. Oh, damn, this is not going to plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, again mostly because I'm also uh, trying to make a video of things. Um, otherwise, I'd be working like so and you wouldn't be able to see anything. But uh, okay, so we've got one wire down, 11 to go. I'm not sure, is this uh, a better way of doing things? Yeah, this might work out better. Ok, 
Okay. This is weird. I now find that uh, again routing those wires over the ESC makes for a far easier soldering job. Huh. I hadn't even considered that. Okay, we got one motor done. And I really uh, wonder what the easiest uh, way of doing this really is. Will this work? Okay, uh, what more can I tell you about this? Yeah, um, obviously the, the motor wire ends are pre-tinned. And uh, what I do is I place the motor wire on top of that puddle which we have on the 4 in 1 ESC on the motor pads and then I simply push the wire into that puddle with my with the tip of my soldering iron. That's what's going on. And I hope you'll be able to see a little bit of what I am doing here. Yeah, that uh, especially that uh, shield that's uh, on the 4-in-1 ESC makes reaching the pads a little bit harder. Again, usually I work my ESC like this, but that, so that uh, heat shield is in the way of things when I try and do that. Okay, this one I'm not happy about, I'll try that again. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm gonna skip the rest of this soldering job. We've got two motors done. You know the drill by now, right? Let's see what the finished product looks like. Alright, so it might seem like I'm uh, cheating here or I've skipped a, a couple of steps, but no, I've only re-edited the flight controller to see, well, what do we hear? Do we hear motor beeps on startup? Let's see. Ta-da! That looks very nice, right? No magic smoke. And we hear motor beeps. Yay, cool. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is, uh, well, let's actually hook up uh, Betaflight and see if we can make it these motors spin. All right, moment of truth. Hooking up Betaflight. Two, 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 two. And warning, yeah. Great, and I'm gonna hook up. Lipo, still no smoke. All right, and uh, you can't see uh, Beta Flight, uh, but uh, I'm gonna move to the motor step, and then uh, I understand the risks. There are no propellers uh, connected uh, or on the motors, obviously. And uh, let's see if motor one spins up. Yay! Hopefully, you can see. Or here, motor one spins up. Then motor two. Motor two spins up. So smoothly, I should add. Motor three. Motor three spins up. Yay! Cool stuff. Also smoothly, last motor. Yay! 100% success. That is nice, uh, even though it's not flying yet, obviously, but uh, so far, pretty nicely. Hi, check day, guys. We have successfully added a 4 in 1 ESC to our quadcopter and tested things. Uh, at least the 4 in 1 ESC and the motors all run. And you might be wondering, well, is it always this smooth and easy sailing? Uh, is, does everything work every time? Well, I'll tell you this, once you've uh, built a couple of quadcopters, your success rate will increase dramatically. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is that 
if you've built a couple of quadcopters, your success rate will be close to this. Most of the quadcopters I nowadays build uh, fly instantly. And I'm not saying I'm some kind of RC wizard or quadcopter wizard, not at all. It's simply experience, right? I know the pitfalls and I know, uh, for instance, those stray hairs on the motor wires. It, al it also makes sense. This isn't rocket science and uh, yeah, just um, uh, go steady. Don't um, take your time in building these things. That'll pay off. Usually go back and check the documentation and uh, especially uh, when hooking things up to your flight controller That's more well, I wouldn't call it complicated, but there's more to Consider there and that's what we'll be doing in the next video I'm not sure whether I'll first install the receiver and then the Vista set doesn't really matter <laughs> You'll see but uh, yeah, so this this worked out well and if you are left with questions hit me up a comment down below I'll be happy to answer your questions Hope this was somewhat uh, useful uh, informative interesting <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> otherwise, uh, at least thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.